Watch the extended ad-free version of this video on my streaming service Nebula right now. The reason young men flock to alt-right MRA movements, like deflated Squidward. Most women are, are, are at their peak attraction, let's say in their early 20s. Or this misogynistic Mickey Mouse. Don't sleep around casually. It's because the left gives brain dead advice to young men. My big and be them women them and man them. You know I took that personally. Oh, I got me sweating in here, man. No and I put on our best Sigma faces to bring you a crash course on how to man like a leftist. And the first lesson is what not to do, which is fall down this alpha male manhole. How is that, Noah? Needs more Vine Boom sounds. Please. Thanks. Monogamy is not natural to alpha males. This is none other than Dr. Umar. The party of Pan-Africanism, the hotep officianado, and a crushing hypocrite. You're probably wondering how we got to this, the taint of takes. Well, first, we have to go back to the beginning. But you have more than one wife. So this is Charlemagne the God, host of The Breakfast Club, half of Bad Takes. I've never Word? been married. Oh, okay. <laughs> so that wasn't... But I will have two queens. All right. <laughs> yes, sir. Damn. So is polygamy more realistic? I think we have to understand that monogamy is not natural to alpha males. Boy, if you don't... This is not only I'm true... I'm it. Now, that is a rare Charlemagne dub right there. <laughs> That's what you lost me there, man. This is not only... This is not only true amongst human beings, even within the animal kingdom. Okay. The alphas tend to have more than one spouse. And if you also look at women, as much as they may chide polygyny, many women will date an alpha male with another woman if she's attracted to him. Just look at the amount of women who date married men, but at the same time say they're against plural marriage. Mm. Whenever, whenever a dude quotes the animal kingdom when he's talking about sex, that dude's f***ing. He said that dude's f***ing at the end. I thought he was going to say that dude's insane. The original study done by the scientist who was like following these groups of wolves, all of these like notions about what it means to be an alpha, to be the one who can like dominate and then become the leader of the tribe or whatever, came out and said like, yeah, this is not, it's not actually like, don't, you guys are taking this way too seriously. Like it's not, it's not a real like thing. Go beyond the fallacy of alpha male science. If you have to say that you are alpha, chances are you ain't. But what is also so tragic is Umar makes the claim that monogamy isn't natural. And if he left it right there, we may have possibly been in agreement. If you've watched my last video on divorcing patriarchy from marriage, then you would understand my sentiments as a married man. But the way coupling is understood in contemporary society is all in order to bolster patriarchy. Umar then goes on to make the claim that women accept polygyny so long as it's with an alpha male. Then goes on to justify this claim by claiming that women are fine with dating married men. However, they are against plural marriage. First off, I don't know what statistics this man citing because it sounds purely anecdotal. Secondly, Umar is actually reciting a particular pain point that goes back for eons in the incel community. The idea that the majority of eligible partners are interested in an oligarchy of patriarchy. And this oligarchy is comprised of men that perform patriarchy the best. And the award for the best patriarchy performance goes to... Tyrone! Thank you. Thank you very much. And the hard truth is that they're right. However, it's not the full story. Yes, there are fans that are interested in hypergamy. There will be women in this binary that are willing to be with a married man begrudgingly if he performs patriarchy well. However, that is not representative of the entirety of the dating pool. We no longer live in a world where women are scarce and you are at risk of your lineage not being able to be carried out. But at the same time, there are femmes that you will not be able to gain access to. It hurts, but we have to get over it. Just like those very femmes are not able to gain access to every desirable partner that they wish. And outside that binary, the same thing exists for NBs and people that do not abide by the gender spectrum. But there's this idea that women have it way easier, way earlier, due to the way that society values women. 
And that misconception is spouted by our favorite top G. The traditional life path of, of a female is To all of my man them and non-femme presenting folk them Listen to me If you call a femme a female, wrap it up Calling a femme a female is the quickest way to dry them out like the Sahara It's the quickest way to self-report When you call a femme a female, it's like femme repellent She's 17, she's 18, she's 19 And her value is massively inflated And I don't blame her Of course it's massively inflated Imagine being 19 years old Have achieved exactly f- zero in your life knowing nothing you put makeup on and and sports stars billionaires actors the most important famous people on the planet the richest men on the planet are begging for your attention the ego you're going to develop let's all be honest right the ego you're going to develop is going to be monumental i'm special i'm so gorgeous all this right and then what happens as they grow older as new generations come along because the truth is most women are, are are at their peak attraction let's say in their early 20s as they grow older what they what women become is far more fearful of competition this is why you'll see a woman who's a bit older go oh you know i really want monogamy today. what she's scared of is her dude getting a 21 year old middle schooler misogyny you put on your makeup and then you go out and you get your ego all f- inflated up even though you're not even that cute the assumption that that value means two different things in this context right it means value for women is being hot value for men is being successful in their career and that right there already you're starting with a premise that is flawed patriarchy makes it mandatory obligatory that femmes are romantically involved and when they are not they are sanctioned either socially financially in many different ways exiled from society and this is a social phenomenon that hurts all of the genders by the way I mean, Ace and Aero people, they can't even, they ain't even, patriarchy don't even recognize them. Folks that ain't coloring in between the lines of patriarchy, it hates that. Don't listen to me. Listen to an NB, a Bahamian NB at that. I, I should probably just start off by saying this. No offense, I am repulsed by men. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> like, and it's just so funny because it's like, throughout my entire, like, career of being on TikTok, I've been always saying, oh, he gay, he gay, he gay. I don't like man, bro. Like, I literally don't like man. Like, I, I haven't liked man from the start. But it don't matter. It does not matter. Because if I say, hey, I think we shouldn't, like, beat up gals. This nigga, this nigga, like, they can eat out. You're incurring homophobia, not even. <laughs> like, it's not even fair, because, like, literally, I don't like man. Like, I don't like man. Like, I'm not even lying, bro. I don't, I don't. But it doesn't matter, because... I exist outside of the binary already, and even if I didn't, even if I was just like a straight guy, they would still say I like man. We have this urge to categorize people and put them into schemas so that we could better make sense of the world. We're constantly made uncomfortable with people disobeying the gender spectrum. People like DemJ. And for those of us that exist in those binaries, like moi, we are pressured to conform to patriarch. The patriarchal pressure to find a mate. And if you don't find a mate, then your value decreases as a, as like a human. There's a moralistic element where once you hit 30 and you haven't settled down, because the expectation was you'd be settling down at the ages he's talking about, of like 17, 18, 19, then you're a failure and there's something wrong with you. Um, and the reason that that was the expectation is that financial aspect of it, of literally not being able to work and not being and being stigmatized to work. So it, once you set it up all this way and then it comes back around and, and it's this is the result and you're still expecting that. And you're like, oh, people aren't wanting to do that anymore because it's legal for women to go outside. No, fuck. yet the men that are radicalized in these monospheric spaces believe that women benefit more under patriarchy than themselves. That all they have to do is exist, and they're adorned with adoration and resources. When in fact, femmes feel similar feelings of disenfranchisement and inadequacy. Imagine growing up in an IG reality, seeing fellow femmes airbrushed to bits, their breasts and butts augmented or I don't know, attenuated, whatever it is, just to fit the beauty standards. White supremacist beauty standards are that. Think about the femmes that don't fit that mold. They are rendered invisible at best or at worst. They're actively marginalized. I'm thinking of folks like Sarah the Fat Critic, who has had to endure countless bouts of hateful comments disguised as meaningful and genuine concerns for her well-being. Or my dear friend Jesse, who regularly gets deemed to be a groomer simply for existing. 
But even so, the people that get it the worst will always be black femmes. Because black femmes are deprived of the ability to even begin to think, to reach the white femininity ideal that is steeped in anti-blackness. Black womanhood in a white supremacist society will always be tantamount to masculinity. Then there's, of course, the tangible dangers for anyone that presents their gender and expresses it in a way that is contrary to the mainstream. Like DemJ. Sorry to keep picking on you. And if I do go out, I have to be careful because it only takes one drunk Bahamian guy to see me and then clock me as being gay and then say, well, I gotta take care of this. <laughs> so it's like, I gotta be careful because it's like, I might, I might want to, you know, dress up in a certain kind of way, but it's the way that a guy might side. I make sure it's like, bro, I'm in a dangerous spot. Let me go on. Of course, being queer in a country like this is going to be yeah. pretty bad, right? But for me, I could turn off my queerness and then just be like, you know, this, you know what's going on? But then other people, like, I know some guys, like, the way that they speak, like, they can't just stop talking in, like, a feminine way. Yeah. And, like, I know some girls, it's like, they don't want to dress in a feminine way. And they aren't going to, like, try to even change that. And so they have to deal with that kind of stuff, like, all the time. Like, constant pushback. Like, oh, why are you talking like that? Why are you dressed like that? And for them, I feel really bad for people who have, like, a lot of gender dysphoria. Because you would get it horrible later. Because nobody is going to look at you. For example, if you're a trans woman and... If you still appear like masculine or whatever, nobody is gonna, like, yeah, nobody's gonna, like, no. I remember actually one of the first times when I realized that I really like being called they, I was in a Wendy's line and I had on a bonnet and it was kind of dark. And the lady, she was like, Oh, can you give them their receipt? And I was like, There, I like them. Mm, okay, I like the rigging up. Yeah, yeah, because like, I guess she couldn't tell if I was like a guy or a girl, so she said they. Because Bayman's normally they wouldn't say they, right? They just say, mm -hmm. oh, he, she. But she literally couldn't tell, and I was like, I like that. I like that. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> All not to say, my brothers in Christ, my mask presenting folk, them. Don't assume that you ain't good enough for gals. Because it's a self fulfilling prophecy that makes you not good enough for gals. Do whatever you need to do in order to feel worthy of affection. Whatever self aggrandizing rituals you have, so long as they don't encroach on the freedom of actual people, please, I shouldn't have to say that. For me, it's going to the gym, getting a haircut, getting my nails done. Onto this treasure trove of misogyny and grammatical errors that I found. Why is it a mo why is it why a is monkey? It a <laughs> why is it a whole Why is it the planet of the ape? What is that the new like Patrick Bateman? To me, he's just a monkey. <laughs> it, you could just put like a hippopotamus there and be like, don't let him take don't let him take custody of the kids. Fight <laughs> fight in the, those courts. Wait, wait, it, isn't the account like all all Yes all those clips, I have right? more of them too, and it's just it's just the monkey. <laughs> Just the CGI ass monkey. Withhold your uh, your AdSense money from the Planet of the Apes <laughs> clips that you're making. Withhold it. That's fine. Women taking your money. YouTube copyright taking your money. Arguably worse. There's really no commentary to be hard here, is there? This is just a glaring example of the men's not being okay. Because why the irrational fear of the femmes taking you for whatever you have? It's giving very much Pearl the pick me. You know the old gal that was talking about how the 50-year-old dad got divorced and left with nothing, not even laughter? You guys commit suicide. Because think about, think about it. Put yourself in those guys' shoes. You work for 20, 30 years. You're still young. You yeah. lost everything tomorrow. You, you could still build it back. Yeah, but I'm not gonna... right. Right, but I'm saying he, he, this guy is 55. Mm. His wife leaves him. Mm. If if he has children that are still under the age of 18, she takes the kids. Mm. He and she is paid to take them and give him less time, and then he has to start from scratch. It's, it's very deceptive. This these talking points are very deceptive because on the one hand, yes, divorce courts tend to favor giving custody to the mother. However, the big the big caveat. Is, is why? Why is that the case? The, the question is never asked. It's never even considered why that could be the case. The specifics of that case, we have no idea if he was an abuser. It's, you have to really pay attention because they're touchy because they'll, they'll use them for the end goal of saying, this man has been maligned here and this is what men face when they enter relationships. Listen, 
man. The things like this is pissing me off. You know how many beautiful films I know personally right now that I could call that dealing with broke man. I talking about so broke, irrevocably broke. And it's okay to be broke. I, I don't understand why in a very voracious and rapacious capitalist society that calling people broke is a joke. But trust oh, me, daddy. daddy, there are a lot of femmes with men without means. I'm telling you right now, but more than you believe, I know femmes that are providing the funds. Yeah, they ain't only bringing something to the table, they bring in the whole table and the silverware and the bacon. Which is why there are so many reactionary social movements like black girls in luxury or soft girl era or, you know, the stay at home girlfriend trend, all of these different ways. It's just repackaging capitalism. I think I could do a whole video on it. But this talking point that I hear from a lot of man them that talking about, oh, you know, gals out here trying to gold dig and they trying to, you know, take us for a meal ticket and X, Y, and Z. That is not representative of the entirety of the dating pool. I have to keep on saying this. This sounds like a chorus. Don't sleep around casually. Well, why not? It's like, why can't sex just be casual and fun? It's like, well, it's too... You can't divorce it from the rest of life. Mm -hmm. Like, let's say you try to divorce your sexual conduct from your emotional sure. life. Well, okay, if you do that 500 times, what sort of person are you? It's a vice, like anything well, else. Yeah, well, it starts to violate yeah. the reciprocity arrangement with other people. It's like, well, sure. we can just use each other for sexual pleasure. It's like, well, you lose no, yeah. you lose. Yeah, you yeah. bet. You bet you lose something. Right. Man. Yeah. Every time you have sex, you lose a centimeter off your penis. If you have sex too many times, it's gone. <laughs> you, you, you lose. For women, it's a year off the life. Or it's 10 years, I think. Because you don't want to have, like, yeah. that'd be, like, 50 times, 50 partners. Oh, my God. Are you serious? That's, no. like, that's the whole village at that point. Ethan from H3 says, it's a vice. And when you're talking about someone having sex 500 times, depending on the span of time, that could be, like, that's possible that could be, like, a sex addiction. Mm -hmm. But Jordan's not talking about that. You know, Jordan's talking about casual sex. He's talking about... A, the moral of casual sex and that it is immoral because of some some things. This is basically a blatant appeal to control femmes' bodies even more than we unfortunately already do with the passing and overturning of things like Roe v. Wade. If you follow in my Twitter or my TikTok, you already know what I'm about to say. Listen, sex is great. Don't let these fellas that ain't getting no bread tell you that sex ain't great, that you can't be having no... Sex is great, okay? Bust some nuts. You know, hey, because guess what? When you're dead and gone and all them people that was going to slut shame you talking about you shouldn't have sex too much and all them nuts that you didn't get the bus, that's on you. So don't deprive yourself of the conquest of flesh just because you're scared of what people think. As long as it's safe and consensual, have at it. And on the other hand, for my man them out there, listen, we need to start actually enjoying sex. You know, like for real, man, all these rap songs that I hear that are talking about sex, it's very violent. It's giving abuse. And that's because it's more about power than pleasure or lovemaking. And this is due to how we were socialized and engendering a particular relationship that men have with sex. Men being socialized to view sex as like a foundational part of who they are, a foundational part of their value. The value isn't to be their ability to satisfy their partner or to be a considerate lover. It's to to, ha to hook up. That's mm -hmm. where the value is derived in terms of the sort of traditional masculinity because it's, it's a form of power. The state of dating and coupling is in desperate need of a disruption. And it has been for generations. This is not unique to us. There's been gender wars going on ad nauseum, but we desperately need more empathy for other genders because we always thinking that they got it better than us, that the grass greener on the other side. Because that perspective is how you get people out there enjoying to see beautiful people in pain and misery like themselves. Like this video from Griffin Mind. We're dating with guys. I don't know how I always end up in the exact same situation. It's always the same thing. They're not in a place where they are looking for a relationship. They have other things that are more important. And I'm just like, oh. I never 
good enough. Women have been fed a lie just as much as men have when it comes to how we should operate in the world. Men hit 18 and they immediately understand that their value is low because the world reflects that. They get out into the world and get very few results. Women hit 18 and they immediately get tons of results and have tons of options, but then they have to face the harsh reality later in life once they hit the so-called wall, which is usually anywhere between like 28 all the way up to like 35. But when women face reality, a lot of the times it's too late and they can't really do anything about it. It's just another reason why everyone needs to hear this information so we can build a happier, healthier society. Join my course. They, they love this. it. They, they love, love it so it. much. It's just like, oh yeah. You would cry because she's beautiful. She's a beautiful, she's beautiful. a cute girl. Yeah. And so she's, they're like, yes, <laughs> finally you're experiencing what it's like to be me. <laughs> I love when you cry. I love when you have you have negative interactions with men because that means you're even more likely to say yes to my little goblin ass. <laughs> this conclusion about building a better society, like you, you're right that by my course, 100%, that's the foundation of the grift. But also, build a better society in this case means mandate girlfriends. It means it means you like women aren't providing and they need to provide because men are not getting it so we need to like that's the con that's the only conclusion to this situation they need to understand this so that they can be more humble and accept whatever offer they get when they're 18 um so that's the first issue that's the first of my issues with this video the second is again the nebulous concept of value he said men turn 18 and they know they have no value well, in what sense? Like I, when I was eighteen, I thought I was the I thought I was the shit. I thought, I, thought was I was the man. The, yes, the, the man. The self help side of social media needs help because the type of help that they say that they provide is built on a very rickety premise. Let me put it to you plainly: all dating advice is bullshit. There's no set of words, no amount of riz. I can't believe I just said that. That will get you whomever you desire. These people just peddling patriarchy, misogyny, and white supremacy disguised as courses. And they're extremely irresponsible for doing so. The truth is that people are individuals and you need to tailor your approach on a case-by-case -case basis. But even that focus is wrong. Just like the issue that I had with that tweet from earlier. The type of advice that the right likes to give, especially catered to young men, is how to get girls. And you're damn right you ain't gonna get that over here. The mere sentence, how to get girls, is a self-report. Because what do you mean by get? They're not property. And if you're trying to figure out different strategies, it's almost as if you're trying to game them into getting them. And I assume that you mean getting sex from them. Doesn't that sound like a little bit more coercive? You don't get girls because they're not property. At least anymore. You have to treat people like people. And once you start doing that, you can see the success. And speaking of success, I owe a majority of mine to you. Because you, the type of person that gets to this point in the video, is the type of person that keeps this channel going. And if you'd like to support even more, then considering subscribing to my streaming service, Nebula. For less than $4 a month or $40 a year, you get access to bonus videos, extended cuts from your favorite independent creators like Real Life Lore and Jesse Gender. You even get access to my videos before they even get to YouTube. But most of all, you get to fight bigotry with me. The very bigotry that makes it difficult for MBs like my friend DemJ to live in their country. So tap the link in the description to get access to my streaming service, Nebula. You are now watching The Nebula Cut. My gender expression is something that needs to be put into a book because I don't even know what's going on at this point. But just to be general, like, even as a very, very young child, I never truly identified with how men would act. Like, I never did. Like, I always would see, like, men doing manly things, and I'd be like, I, I mean, that's cool, I guess, but whatever, right? Mm. And then it's like, I was just okay with being me, right? Mm -hmm. And something else that I've noticed too is that I was always in uh, proximity to women, and so I grew to like learn their um, their experience, like their fears and things that they would go through, and that had an effect on me to where basically I was between these two spaces where I am in the space of men, but I don't really identify with them. But then I'm also in the space of women, but I don't get treated like one. 
Mm. So here I am existing as this person who can kind of dip into both spaces. And that's basically my identity, kind of. 